Good morning and welcome back to Ape Tech Tutorials. I hope you guys enjoyed the last uh, tutorial we worked on uh, where we showed you guys how to uh, do a multiplayer game. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make multiple level games. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and let me open my um, my project here and give you guys a demo. So we're gonna demo you guys uh, how to uh, play this game. And as you can see up here, there's a level, and we have a hedge hutch, hedge. I know I can never say that word. <laughs> Who has to go through the maze and touch touch the jack o' lantern? So let's try that. I know she'll first play and I use again the uh, arrows to control it so quick demo so that you guys know can see how it so now it changed levels, it changed the color of the maze. Uh, so I'm just going to cheat a little here. I'm gonna grab my mouse. Oh, it won't let me not here. Can't cheat. <laughs> uh, on the other side, I can show you guys. But as he completes the he or she, it <laughs> completes the level. It should uh, change the background as well in the maze. Not for everything, but for certain things. There you go. Uh, let me go ahead and show you guys what's inside of this. So let's minimize and see the inside of it. So this here is our code. This is what we have for our hedgehog. Obviously you guys can choose whatever sprite you guys want. I went with the hedgehog because I had already done a maze game a while back, about eight months ago. And um, if you guys want to look at it, I'll link it at the top of the of the video so they usually pop at the top of a right corner so I'll link that for you guys um, so basically again what we want to do is be able to control this uh, sprite and like all the other games I've showed you we use the uh, the up and down arrows and the left and right arrows to control them and in this case, instead of physically minimizing him with the mouse, uh, what I did is I minimized the hedgehog by using the set size for 225. That will make my image of the character smaller. And then I told it what, what uh, I specified what custom of it I wanted. It had multiple customs, I deleted all the other ones. At this point, I don't think I need this. I could delete it, but I just, thought about it right now um, and then here like the other ones I told it where I wanted to start and then the controls of it and if you look at my previous tutorials uh, I'll, I'll explain this on the previous one so you can check that out if you want but it's very simple just check for which key you're pressing the up down left right and it'll change the X position and then it'll uh, do the rotation a certain degrees of the character. Now, this was something I did. And then I uh, next thing I did was to create the maze. We'll come back to the hedgehog. Uh, so to make it look differently, I did inside of it, I created different costumes. So we have this one, this one, and then this one. So you can create your own things by just grabbing objects. Um, obviously they only have these ones here, that's the rectangular and the circular. But the way I created this one was by grabbing this um, mouse with the dot. And what that allows you is to have more vertices in into it. And so I add like a little circle and then you can put things in and out like this 
that allows you for a little more flexibility due to the limited things we have but if you want to you can make another one in whatever other programs you have right and then okay so let's go back to the code so for the maze all I wanted to do was to change its uh, uh, custom which is the the maze itself uh, whenever I receive the next level and then whenever we restarted the program, I wanted to come back to the original maze, which was the first maze, right? So that's the only thing I did to the maze, nothing complicated. And then we have the jack-o'-lantern, and the jack-o'-lantern is uh, the price for the character in this, in this game. So all I wanted was to make it a size. I didn't want it so big, so I just made it as a, a 20%. So that's what I did next and then after doing that I went back to the hedge hodge and I was I needed to I knew I needed to add um, the ability to change them the background and, and stuff so the first thing we did was to uh, set the level so I added a variable and I forgot to explain it to you guys last time the variables you can add them here up on the top so you click on these variables, orange circles as variables, and then say up here you you click on this that says make a variable, and you just type a name of whatever variable you guys want. In this case, I already have my variable, and I always leave it for all sprites because I want to be able to, in case I need it in some other area, I want to be able to use it. And again, uh, sprites are these things here. These are the sprites. So if you do it for all, then you you can control that variable in any, with any of those sprites. If you do it for only one, then you'll only be able to control it with one. So I created that variable that it's shown up here, which shows me my level. And I use in this, uh, in this code here. So the first thing I want to do is set the level to one when the game starts. So that is done by doing a set level to one. Then we switch our background, which is, you'll see guys in a little bit. I have another background that is for a, for the different other levels. Um, so I wanted when it restarts to start with this purple background with bats in the back. And then forever, as long as this um, character is touching the sprite one, uh, then we wanted to go ahead and jump back into its original position. So sprite one is this uh, maze here, and sprite one controls all the other mazes as well because it the other mazes are part of the sprite one. They're different looks of sprite one. So if you put this here, then that would allow for the character if it touches a maze to have to be reset and then we have these where if the jack-o'-lantern if the ma if the character touches the jack-o'-lantern then we send it back to its original position and we move to the next level and then our we broadcast to the next uh, by doing it, the next uh, look of your background which allows for it to look like a new level and it brings a new maze now here is where I wanted to change the background of the maze. When we're past level three, I want my background to change. And I'll show you guys that. It's easier to show it here because that way I don't have to be controlling it with the, ma with the keyboard. I can just drag it and test it. And then we have these where the, this is the last step I added. So I'll explain this, but I'll show you guys how this works. So this one is for my bats here. If my uh, character is touching any of the bats, not here, but in the level, in the last few levels, I have bats that are falling down. And if it touches them, then it has to go back to its original position. So let me show you guys really quickly what that fourth level looks like. So all I'm going to do is just drag them here. And again, you can only do this in test mode, not in the real one. 
So there's no cheating. <laughs> so this is this is the uh, fourth level, and as you can see, the background changed. So this is the background change here, and then my bats here are every time they touch the character, they'll make a noise. And if I move the character, then he will it will move back because it's being touched by the bat. So let's put her here. And it'll reset the character back to his original position. So basically that's what that does. <clears throat> and then let's look at the bats. So the bats, they they're basically waiting on their broadcast on the event to happen. So when for example this one when when it knows that we're on the on this background here this pink background then it's gonna set size to 20 for the bat and it's gonna show the bat and then forever as long as we are in this background it would change it would start fall, making the, uh, the bats fall and that is something I showed you guys on an, another uh, tutorial we started with the shark one, I believe. That was the one where everything was the poison was falling. But in the case, in this case, um, so we're doing the same thing. We're just making the bats fall down and then randomly appear. And when they touch the the uh, character, our hedgehog, then it does play a sound. And I did this for each of our bat characters. So this one only controls bat the first one here and um, it plays the sound once it touches the character then it hides waits for two seconds then comes back and I random position and glides back into it to show itself and you have to put the show because you hit it if you don't put show then it will not show again and then here what I did is when we go to the different backgrounds that is not um, this pink background, then I want my bats to hide. And then the same thing, same idea for uh, the second bat, except I put a different sound. So that's about it. I mean, it looks complicated, but it's not that complicated. So basically what you have to do is create different background, uh, backgrounds in the background um, stage thing and again you can just grab things from the internet and try to put them there make sure that your images don't have a background because it's harder to get rid of the backgrounds multiple backgrounds will allow you to go ahead and ha look, make it look like you're playing different levels because it will be changing the backgrounds to different levels and uh just a quick thing, let me show you guys. Let's go back to the code. If you see this game here, it looks like it at least has, uh, I wanna say, it looks like it has seven, seven different uh, levels. So that's one, right? One and two, three, four, five six well actually six levels it makes it look like that but the only thing I did was to change the background and then add a little different animation to the to the next ones now if you guys wanted to get more creative and do something different you can add another background or have like in here a check where you only want it to appear like at a certain levels to bats and in another level you want it to have ghosts appear or other stuff and that could make it look like more different levels just by adding more animation to it I hope you guys liked it so in this tutorial you basically learn how to make multiple level games and simply by changing the background and adding different sprites and activities to the to the levels and you can totally get creative with this one 
there's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, I did a maze because of Halloween and mazes and jack-o'-lanterns and bats. So um, you can do whatever you guys feel like doing with it. Just uh, edit it, change it as you want. Uh, do leave me comments. Let me know if you guys want to see something else. And uh, like always, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like us. And I'll see you guys next week.